uh, IOM3 uh, Hong Kong, uh, two speaker, uh, to give a talk on the strategy use of block cavern for sustainable development of Hong Kong. Uh, this topic, uh, in fact, uh, uh, our major theme of uh, Iron 3, uh, our theme uh, future is our topic this year. And this topic tonight is uh, further to our AGM uh, webinar given by uh, our honorable uh, speaker, uh, Professor Yang from uh, ITA and uh, Dr. Raymond Zhang from GU. Before I pass to Roy to introduce the speaker, uh, I would like to thank uh, our co-organizing uh, party, uh, Hong Kong IE uh, Civil Divisions, uh, Hong Kong IE Geotechnical Division and uh, Hong Kong Construction Associations. Uh, they uh, help us in circulation of this uh, uh, fire. Uh, special thanks, uh, I would like to thank uh, Tony Ho. Uh, he is encouraging uh, us to uh, organize this uh, uh, topic such that our construction industry uh, can uh, understand more how the uh, underground development uh, in Hong Kong. So, uh, welcome all. So, uh, thanks for opening by our chairman, uh, Mr. Tim Le, and I'm Roy Hong, also from the uh, IOM Free Hong Kong branch. So, uh, today's uh, the topic is about uh, carbon development in Hong Kong. Well, it is always a hot topic uh, right now here in Hong Kong. Uh, why? Because uh, we, are, we are suffering from the problem of the land scarcity. So land supply is always an issue. Cavern development in Hong Kong actually is now uh, taking the Hong Kong from a narrow range of issues in the past to a recent right application in the territory. So the Hong, the Hong Kong government uh, is actually doing something. Uh, actually, uh, recently, uh, in recent years, uh, we have issued a Cavern uh, master plan this is actually a time planning tool uh, covering a of land uses suitable for cavern development in Hong Kong in the and I formulate a list of suitable facilities for relocation to cavern and implement the other enabling measures with the view to fostering a sustainable multi-dimensional land development approaches, which you can as you, you can access in uh, the government website. So uh, the topic Tonight is about the strategic use of Block Cavern. Uh, as our chairman said, it's our honor to have two speakers from the Geotechnical Engineering Office, in short, we call it GEO, uh, to give two talks tonight. Um, I understand some participants may not know what GEO is for those from the overseas press. Let me spend a few minutes to introduce what the who is GEO. The GEO of the Civil Engineering and Development Department is actually a functional unit or part of the government. It's a government agency uh, mandated by geotechnical engineers looking after public service and policy with to geotechnical engineering. As to what Kevin development, I will say that uh, what GEO has been doing is actually beyond what its name suggests. Apart from the apart from the engineer expert, actually the GEO has been doing a range of tasks um, from legislation and policy, time planning, food to design and construction, as well as maintenance and rehabilitation of caverns. So you can see that actually GEO is the one who is uh, moving forward with more caverns in Hong Kong. So tonight, uh, the two speakers from the GEO they will give two talks. Uh, 
one is on the strategic planning of work havens, and the other is uh, to highlight one or two uh, projects in the pipeline. So you may expect that the two presentations will give you clues on the future project opportunities about work cavern development projects in Hong Kong. Um, before I introduce the two speakers, uh, perhaps just a little bit about the uh, rundown tonight. Uh, the two speakers, they each will give the, the presentations, and I believe they are more than happy to take questions. So the the Q&A session will follow after the second presentation. Or for all those who would like to raise questions, feel free to drop your question in the chat box anytime you think about you, if there's something you want to ask. So, uh, first now, let me introduce the first speaker, okay? <coughs> the first speaker, Mr. Leslie Zhang, my colleague, a young and energetic professional who is a senior geotechnical engineer in the GEO. Uh, he has a legal background and also uh, a master degree in the Imperial College London and have worked for a number of tunnel projects in London, including the Crossrail. He has also been involved in uh, various major tunnel projects in Hong Kong as well, including the MTR's Express Rail Link. The DSD's uh, Deep Sewage Tunnel has a stage 2A and a Lin Tong Hen Yun White Boundary Control Point. He has many years of experience in checking tunnel and geotechnical design in the district division of the GEO. He is now working in the planning division of the GEO and overseeing a strategic planning and development study which facilitate a wide application of cabin developments in Hong Kong. So, Nasli, are you ready? Yes, yeah, so I'm happy to pass the time to you. Let me invite Leslie. Thanks. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, Tim and Roy, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Leslie Zhang. Today, we are going to talk about how are we um, going to uh, engineer a new future of cavern development in Hong Kong. And... Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, we can hear you, yes. Okay. Okay, this is the content of my presentation. So I'll first cover the opportunities and some unique benefits of cavern development. Then I'll explain the cavern master plan and other enabling measures uh, for cavern development. Um, this is the famous uh, Olympic Stadium in Norway, constructed back in 1993. Not only this 63 meter span cavern is a magnificent creation, such use of cavern space is an amazing idea. When I look into this um, fabulous cavern, I ask myself, um, do we have the opportunity to build something similar here in Hong Kong? Let's look at the fundamental element that creates the um, opportunity of cavern development in the city. The first elemental factors uh, is of course the high land cost in Hong Kong. Uh, this city is one of the most expensive one in the world. The average uh, residential flat price is about 20 times of the average yearly income per person. Um, probably uh, this is not a very welcoming number, but as a matter of fact, this is an important factor as it comparatively makes the construction cost less significant because the cavern land created is becoming more valuable. The second factor is that um, our mountains are close to well-developed areas. Our city is developed right at the toe of the hillside. Um, you can say that it is limiting our service land development space, but in fact, there's nothing stopping us from taking horizontally to create new land for our development. The hillside is close to these premium lands and this can be the solution for the development of this congested city. And therefore in our planning of our future uh, development, it is necessary to have a three-dimensional vision to unlock these hidden land resources. And of course, another fundamental factor is the geology. It makes a big difference 
if we are in a tectonic uh, stress zone or in areas with uh, complicated geology. Through years of tunneling experience in Hong Kong, we pretty much understand that large cavern in Hong Kong is absolutely doable. In 2010, uh, CEDD GEO produced a territory-wide uh, cavern suitability map. As shown here, uh, nearly two-thirds of the land in Hong Kong is suitable for cavern development. Be it a volcanic rock or granite rock, it is all fine. Um, so it is very suitable for uh, uh, cavern engineering. In combination of these factors, um, high land value, lack of uh, land supply, and also the mountains are close to valuable urban area, and that's uh, good rock quality is common. It can be concluded that the cavern development is a suitable and sustainable source of medium to long-term land supply. So how exactly are we going to materialize these land resources? We can broadly separate them into two, le two legs um, for the existing facilities by relocating uh, the suitable one uh, into cavern, uh, just like the Public Works Central Lab, uh, we can release the development potential of the valuable surface land. Another excellent example is, of course, the Shatin Sewage Truman Works, releasing 28, 28 hectares of surface land. On the other hand, for the new facilities, by putting more and more mm -hmm. new uh, mm -hmm. facilities into caverns, mm -hmm. um, just like uh, 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 the archive, new archive centers, uh, it can reduce the overall surface land demand. Uh, Ivan will cover uh, more about uh, these two projects. And uh, just like all our infrastructure development options, Kevin development takes some time, uh, but if we have momentum of keep creating the land, uh, Kevin land projects, uh, project by projects, it will be a continuous source of land supply. Um, thanks to the pioneers decades ago, uh, there were some past successful cases of cavern development. In 1980s, uh, some metro cavern stations were built associated to the railway development. Um, uh, but for the non-railway type cavern facilities, the first was, was the um, uh, Stanley Sewage Truman Works uh, in 1995. Also, there were another two facilities built in uh, 1990s. Uh, it is the, um, they are the um, um, Island West Transfer Station and the Kausat One Explosive Depot. They were built in the caverns uh, mainly due to the situation that uh, there were no suitable surface land identified at that time. Another important pioneer project is the um, uh, Western Saltwater Service Reservoir, which were uh, um, relocate into the cavern to make place for the Hong Kong U campus expansion. Uh, in the recent years, as the railway network uh, keep developing, there were a lot of uh, 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 cavern stations, such, such as um, Admiralty Space Station and the Hong Kong U uh, University Station. These are all important projects. Uh, not only they demonstrated the feasibility of cavern development, but more importantly, they allow us to have a better feeling and understanding of the cavern environment in Hong Kong. So when uh, new project proponents or decision makers who know nothing about cavern engineering, they would have a first-hand understanding and feeling of the cavern development by simply paying a visit to these facilities and thereby enhancing their confidence of cavern development. The previous cavern development in Hong Kong, um, other than railway stations, are mostly uh, not in my backyard type uh, NIMBY facilities. But do we have the chance to develop other types of facilities that we see all around the world? Particularly in Scandinavian countries, caverns were commonly used for various functions such as a stadium, swimming hall, and in continental Europe. I will show you in a minute about uh, the diversity of usage. In Hong Kong, our main target is of course related to land supply, but actually um, there are uh, certain unique features about the use of caverns, which offer unparalleled 
uh, advantage as compared to the surface land. If we do not take into account of these intangible benefits, we are not materializing the full benefits of cavern development. There are many unique features and benefits about rock caverns. First, it is of course to house NIMBY facilities. And most importantly, it is to isolate any unwanted substance, uh, for example, bad smell, um, um, uh, from, from, uh, to confine them in the cavern. Rock surrounding uh, the cavern would form a natural barrier such that all kinds of nu a nuisance can be processed in a centralized manner and discharged at, at an uh, acceptable location after treatment. And therefore, by relocating NIMBY facilities into cavern, we are not only releasing the site itself, but also the development potential of the area around the site, surrounding the site. Secondly, it can provide a stable environment. For example, uh, the temperature and humidity. Uh, in the second part of the presentation by Ivan, he will further illustrate the importance of stable environment to some particular types of material testing. Another benefit is a tight security control. This, particularly, this is particularly crucial uh, to some kinds of facilities like data center. If you have a chance to look at some surface data center buildings, there are tall fence walls surrounding the entire data center buildings with lots of uh, CCTV. But for cavern development, all you have to look after is at the portal location only. Another benefit, of course, is freeing up the land for land supply, which I have illustrated already. And finally, for rock caverns development, it will generate rock material for uh, the construction industry. And this is an associated benefit um, to support and su supplement the ag aggregate market. And there are other distinct edges of using uh, rock caverns. As shown here is the National Archives of Norway. Um, these are huge facilities, but from a look from outside, it is just a small por uh, portal and it integrates we very well with the environment. From the aerial photo, you, you can't even locate the cavern facilities. In addition, um, cavern development offers a very flexible option for future expansion. For example, there are plenty of space for the National Archive to develop phase six and mm. seven and so on into the mountains. Another example is the National Library of Sweden. Um, the library store is concealed under the library building very well, so it does not have a disturbed, enjoyable garden at the surface. Talking about the environmental effects due to the cavern development, there is another good example of um, Geopark Sardona in uh, Switzerland. There are a number of underground facilities inside or in close proximity to this geo park. First, there is an hangar badge testing gallery under the geo park. Inside these facilities, there are various kinds of interesting activities going on. Uh, for example, there is a fire testing chamber to conduct real fire tests for fire resistance of the construction materials. There are also um, a material testing laboratory, concrete batching facility, and some lecture hall inside the uh, hangar batch testing gallery. Further down to the southwest, um, it is the Brunick Indoor. Um, this is basically a shooting center where people train their shooting skills. And also they have a fire testing tunnel. In this fire testing tunnel, they start fire and more importantly, generate smoke to create some real scale, one-to-one -one scale uh, smoke testing facilities. Of course, there are other storage warehouse and restaurant inside the cavern. Another example is the Bergwerk Skonsent, uh, an old mine turned into a museum. It's huge inside and visitors can understand the mining history by joining guided tour. Finally, close to the geopark, there is an underground quarrying which is in operation. Basically, there is nearly no disturbance to the surface drill park due to the uh, underground operation. Um, 
similarly in Hong Kong, um, these past Kevin uh, Pioneer cases, the Island West Transfer Station, Stanley Sewage Room Works, Western Saltwater Surface Reservoirs, um, all of them demonstrated that the unparalleled advantage of minimal visual impact and also there's nearly no surface land disturbance of the cavern development. You don't even notice it uh, of the existence of, of them. So I have presented the opportunities of cavern development in Hong Kong and some unique benefits of using caverns. We engineers have to find a way to make it happen. As I have mentioned in the old days, the projects were developed individually. The cavern application were, um, uh, was mostly driven by lack of other surface land alter alternatives and the real benefits of cavern development have not been properly exploited. We need a coherent, systematic and sustainable way to develop cavern. With this in mind, the cavern master plan and other enabling measures um, for uh, cavern development were promulgated. The Cavern Master Plan was promulgated in 2017. The uh, main function of it is to provide a project proponent an all-in-one information set for cavern development at early planning stage. It delineates 48 strategic cavern area which are confirmed to be suitable for cavern development. The delineation of the cavern area is not only about geological consideration um, but it covers the uh, all other aspects, including traffic, environmental, and planning compatibility. So the project proponent um, will still need to carry out detailed assessment for each um, project, but the CAFA master plan will give you the preliminary information of it. The concept of an SCVA is not to be exhausted by uh, an individual project, which means that um, this SCVA are located uh, in prime location and the size of it is about um, uh, uh, to 30 to 200 hectares. It is uh, delineated with the concept that to house uh, multiple facilities. In 2018, um, in collaboration with planning department, the uh, Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, the HKPSG was already uh, updated um, to expand the land use uh, with potential for cavern development. Um, with this update, it opens up the opportunity for project proponent to develop these facilities uh, inside cavern. Um, to better visualize the concept of uh, strategic cavern area. Um, uh, so now we are uh, having the uh, cavern master plan and the strategic cavern area. Um, and we know where to develop our caverns, but we need to make some real projects. And therefore, there is a number of enabling measures implemented to facilitate a cavern development. Uh, one of the measures, of course, as I've mentioned, is to relocate uh, uh, facilities. So uh, uh, there is a plan, a relocation plan, for relocate a, a suitable government facility in place. In the long-term study for cavern development, a number of government facilities were already identified to be suitable um, uh, to be relocated into caverns, including, of course, uh, sewage treatment works, uh, refuse transfer station, um, uh, vehicle depots, uh, uh, water treatment works, server reservoirs, and warehouse archives and material testing laboratories. So the government is progressively taking on board um, feasibility studies on on the aforementioned uh, 30 facilities uh, with high potential uh, for relocation. Uh, various factors including uh, resource implication, overall planning and development needs of the neighborhood community, uh, relocation schemes and planned use of relisted sites and the management of the relevant facility, etc. All of them will have to be considered in a comprehensive manner and with a view to working out the implementation priority and the schedules of individual relocation projects that are feasible. Uh, currently, a feasibility study on four relocation projects, um, such as um, uh, Yao Tong uh, uh, Surface Reservoir, um, the Public Works Central Lab, uh, 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 and these projects commenced. 
and feasibility studies um, of other projects. They are in the pipelines and hopefully they can be launched uh, in a suitable time. Another enabling measures uh, is the underground quarrying from cavern development. There are a lot of benefits to use underground quarrying as an implementation means. On one hand, we can identify suitable underground, quarry, underground quarrying sites and create the valuable cavern space. In long term, the cavern space can be used for various kinds of facilities. Um, on the other hand, the excavated rock can become rock products and also um, concrete products uh, as an associated benefit. The underground quarrying normally takes a relatively longer duration to complete, but the work we do now will benefit the community in the future. Just like the um, Anderson Road Quarry, if it was not implemented decades ago, we would not have the precious uh, development, developable land uh, today. There are a lot of um, successful examples of underground quarrying from cavern development. A good example um, is the Subtropolis uh, in USA, as you, as you can see in the uh, middle photograph. Um, it was just a rock mine uh, for very, uh, many years, and you can see that the rock pillars are um, irregularly uh, placed initially. Uh, later, it was found that actually the space is uh, very useful, and therefore the mining was planted with a vision of long-term utilization of the cavern, and therefore the rock pillars constructed uh, in a more regular pattern later. Um, such that the space can be used more efficiently uh, in the future. Today, the Subtropolis is used as a, a logistic warehouse and also offices. In Hong Kong, we have um, almost completed the technical study for cavern development um, uh, and also for underground quarrying and identified it at two high potential sites for uh, underground quarrying. Um, uh, uh, normally, it is necessary uh, to combine uh, with the business of concrete batching, uh, asphalt uh, uh, production, and also rock processing for uh, operation of uh, underground quarrying mines. Um, and also, Lam Te is one of the potential sites. The geology of Lam Te is granitic rock, and it is a major supply <coughs> of our Hong Kong um, uh, aggregate, or aggregates for many years. We have concluded that it is, of course, technically suitable to carry out under, underground quarrying at this site. And another suitable site we have identified is the Cheng Yi North. Uh, the geology of this site is mainly volcanic rock with some rhyolitic dike rock and also microgranitic rocks. Um, and these uh, aggregates uh, from these kinds of uh, uh, rock types are alkaline silica, silica reactive and therefore further ingredient is needed to suppress the ASR effect. Um, supplementary cementitious material like PFA and GGPS um, were normally adopted in other places, um, uh, actually quite successful to suppress the ASR effect and, and they, they have been proven to be uh, very effective. So, so uh, in Hong Kong, and to further verify the effectiveness of SCM for the, for the geology of this particular site in Chengdu North, a series of tests was conducted and proved the, um, to prove the effectiveness of SCM uh, in suppressing the ASR effect. Um, and, and it is, it is uh, and the test results are all, all fine, and uh, we have unlocked an underground pouring potential of this site. Of course, the dominance of granite um, being the aggregate source is not going to be changed in a short period of time. Um, uh, the market and the entire industry would need um, uh, a, 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 a certain period in order to adopt uh, the, the, the volcanic rock as the um, a suitable aggregate. But this has to be moved step by step and we are, we are uh, moving towards this direction. Another enabling measures is the pilot planning and engineering study. One of the hindrance of project proponents to participate in cavern development is the early efforts required to kickstart a project. 
including the zoning mechanism, uh, the zoning amendment procedures. Therefore, a pilot planning and engineering study was launched to identify cavern areas uh, with high development potential and identify the suitable land use and conduct uh, technical assessment to facilitate the zoning amendment process. We have uh, already selected some sites for this study, but it cannot be disclosed at this moment. And in this study, we have identified a number of high potential facilities and would come up with some reference design, not only to demonstrate the detailed visibility of the scheme, but also to allow the project proponent to have an initial version of the design to, to kickstart uh, the project. One of the facilities um, uh, we have identified uh, with high potential is the data center. We are living in a world with cloud computing now, and this generates a demand of data center. And by putting data center uh, inside the cavern, it can take the advantage of stable temperature environment and does not affect uh, by the temporary temperature uh, variation of daytime and nighttime. As mentioned previously, uh, caverns also offer a unique security benefits as compared to service building. There are a number of overseas examples of housing a data center in cavern, uh, for example, in China, in Norway, and also um, uh, in USA. Another high potential facility um, is the uh, logistic warehouse in Springfield of USA. As mentioned, there, there is a sizable logistic warehouse using cavern space created by underground quarrying methods. Columbarium is another focus in Jerusalem of Israel for religious reasons. Uh, they need space for the disease. And as we know, the space in Jerusalem is very limited and therefore an underground cavern uh, uh, columbarium was constructed to solve uh, the problem of the limited space. On the technical side, um, we need to make sure that uh, cavern development worth each penny. In Hong Kong, most of the civil engineering uh, in infrastructure adopted the CAS in situ concrete lining as the permanent support. Um, uh, to achieve a more cost-effective design, uh, rock reinforcement approach should be adopted as the permanent uh, support. Um, it had been demonstrated that in numerous temporary support design uh, for the tunnel project in Hong Kong, uh, that a rock reinforcement approach absolutely uh, it is absolutely suitable in Hong Kong's geology, and so uh, for permanent support. Um, uh, for example, a thin sprayed concrete with rock bolting had been adopted in the Stanley Sewage Truman Works um, um, and also the Island West Transfer Station and also the Kausat Wan uh, explosive doubles. In overseas, of course, the Norwegian methods of tunneling is the standard cavern and tunnel uh, support methods. It was adopted even in subsea tunnel with pre excavation grouting. I've shown this uh, picture before. Uh, about a lecture hall inside the Hanger Badge testing gallery, the rock reinforcement approach can meet all the requirements for indoor activities to achieve the required water tightness, to properly support the ground, and also um, to provide an aesthetically uh, pleasant environment for our um, uh, normal activities. Ivan will cover more about advanced material in initiative in his part related to the joint uh, cavern development project. Another important technical issues that affect cost efficiency of cavern development is the fire safety issues. A consistent design uh, standard would be beneficial to ensure cost efficiency. The guide to uh, fire safety design for caverns 1994 was published more than 25 years ago. It only covers public utilities like um, sewer treatment works, refuse transfer station, and water reservoirs, which normally involve uh, low population and low fire risk facilities. However, we are expanding list of uh, facilities uh, to cover a lot more different types um, with different characteristics. Um, there is actually a code of practice of fire safety in building. Uh, we call it FS code. However, this FS code is mainly applicable to buildings only, surface buildings only, I mean, uh, but not focusing uh, on cavern development. 
I'll show you one example which clearly demonstrates these difficulties. Uh, for the means of access requirement in the FS code, it mentioned that the EVA should be provided to serve at least one major facade of the building. Um, one major facade. So actually, this requirement is clearly only relevant to typical buildings above ground. For development in cavern space without a building facade, this prescriptive requirement in the FS code is fully articulating that um, of, of its incompatibility to the uh, cavern development. Therefore, there is actually a need to update the guide to fire safety design for caverns. And we have been um, having a constructive collaboration with building departments and the FS, FSD, fire services department for this. This also illustrated that um, the cavern development, cavern development is actually requires uh, multidisciplinary uh, collaboration and input. We cannot complete a cavern development by just geotechnical or civil engineering. So let me provide a little summary. Um, five to six years ago, uh, before the promulgation of a cavern master plan and the enabling measures, there were only a few cavern studies and projects. Of course, the relocation of um, Shatin Sewage Treatment Works have been a very important pilot project. Um, it showcased the benefits of releasing 28 hectares of prime land for uh, other users. Um, we have an, another three projects from Enhancing Land Supply Study. Now, after the promulgation of Kevin Master plan, plan, and thanks to the enabling measures, <coughs> Well, we have considerable numbers of studies and projects ongoing now. Moreover, <clears throat> there is also uh, various new types of facilities under the study. Counting um, counterclockwise from the top right corner, the Shatin Sewer Treatment Works is now under construction. There is a study of revitalization of the Limahang Lead Caves, recently commenced it with, with a view to allowing visitors to the caves. And then uh, there is um, uh, the relocation of Diamond Hill Surface Reservoir. It is now under an IDC study. And the relocation of Chunwan Number 2 Surface Reservoir is now under the feasibility study. As I've mentioned, Lamte was as identified as a suitable location for underground quarrying. And there is an upcoming um, IDC study for that. Relocation of Tan Kui Chun uh, surface reservoir. Uh, this study covers a combination of various reservoirs to be housed in cavern, and the feasibility study is now ongoing. The Chun Wun water treatment works is a new type of facilities. Um, this is um, a challenging one. It is involves water treatment process using chemicals, and also the Qing Yi um, surface reservoir is a new one in the pipeline. Um, I've covered the two studies, um, the technical study of uh, underground quarry income cavern development and also the pilot planning and engineering study. Um, so the next is the uh, reprovisioning of the Victoria Public Mortuary is a project um, moving the mortuary uh, to the, to the uh, previous um, West Island Line explosive depots uh, mines. Um, and also another project is the feasibility of Yao Tong surface reservoir uh, to relocate uh, to caverns. It is now ongoing. And another one is the investigation study by EPD at Taishan Kok, uh, Taishan Kok uh, Refuse Transfer Station has just commenced. So uh, it comes to the two new facilities to be housed in the cavern. Uh, it is the relocation of Public Works Central Laboratory and the new archive center. And I'll pass the stage to Ivan to talk about um, these two facilities in more detail. Let me uh, thanks Leslie for his uh, presentation. Well, uh, Leslie just give a very comprehensive uh, overview of the cavern development strategy in Hong Kong. Well, uh, I can see that apparently Hong Kong has a great potential of building more caverns. But at the same time, uh, Leslie also highlights to all of you that there are some uh, technical challenges that we have to meet. Well, but um, that says, I mean, all these challenges 
also means uh, opportunity for uh, engineers and also other mining professionals as well. So um, as I learned the society, uh, IOM3 is really looking forward to have more Capron projects to come. So uh, maybe at, at this time, let's look at one or two projects in the pipeline to see how this works. So uh, I would like to now introduce the second speaker for his talk. Uh, the, sec sec the second speaker is Mr. Ivan Chen. Uh, again, my colleague in GEO, also a young and handsome professional. He's a senior geotechnical engineer in the GEO, who has over 15 years of experience in the geotechnical engineering firm since his graduation from the University of Science and Technology in Hong Kong with a master's degree. Uh, Ivan started his career in the consulting firm Atkins Channel in Hong Kong. Oh, he joined the GEO in uh, 2011. Uh, throughout his career path, he has been involved mainly in the tunneling projects. For example, uh, the Central One Jet Bypass, NTR South Island Line, the uh, Quinton Line Extension, um, Central Climate, etc. I think, as far as I know, Ivan uh, is an expert uh, largely in the TBM tunneling. Uh, Ivan is currently administrating several Kevin projects under GES before, including uh, what he's going to talk about, the relocation of a, pub a public works central laboratory to Kevin's, as well as an adjoining new Kevin archive center for the government record services. I think for the laboratory one, once it is done, it will be the first of the kind. It will be first of this kind in Hong Kong. So uh, let's introduce. Uh, let's me invite Ivan to give his talk. Ivan, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Roy. I pass the time to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Roy, for your kind words, and thank you, team, the chairman, for giving me the opportunity to share my words to all of the participants in the industry. I'm sure that you have dropped down all the important message conveyed by Leslie about the planning of future Kevin's development. In the following 15 minutes or 30 minutes, I would like to bring you back from the future to present. I'm going to tell you what is happening now. Tonight, I would like to share with you some information about a major Kevin's project in the pipeline, namely the John Kevin's development at Anderson Road College site. At the same time, I'm looking forward to hearing from you uh, for your ideas on the project so that we will end up with a win-win situation tonight. I will start with a brief introduction of the project, and then I will tell you why we choose to build a caverns. After that, I will talk about the design concept of the project, following by some key technical innovation to be adopted in the project. At the end, there will be a short conclusion. Let us start with the project background now. In fact, as mentioned by Leslie, Kevin development in Hong Kong has quite a long history. I guess the Stanley Seaway Treatment Works would be the first public works involved in the use of rock caverns, which was built in early 90s. After 30 years, we have built caverns for various WSD reservoir refuge transfer station, a mega-sized caverns is being built to house the entire sewer treatment works in Sha Tin. Yet, I would like to say this facility can be classified into a single group facility. Sometimes we call it Limbe, which refers to the lot in my backyard. The first question is that, um, other than Limbe's, if we are going to put any other things into caverns, if you have listened to what Leslie said in the first section, you probably know the answer is yes, we can put other things. In foreign country, we have restaurant, shooting range, warehouse, wine storage, museum, or even hotels inside caverns. Then the second question is, uh, what will we do next? In order to answer this question, we have carried out a very comprehensive review and confirmed that, that several types of facility that are suitable to be accommodated in caverns, other than Limby, laboratory, archive center, data center, logistic warehouse are some good examples of suitable facility to be from technical point of view. The final question is that, are we 
Are we ready to move one step forward now? I wish after this presentation, I could have your consent from you saying that, yes, we are ready. Okay, this project, the John Kevin's development at Anderson Road Quarry consists of two facilities. They are the repositioning of the Public Works Central Laboratory, we call it PWCL, and the building of a new archive center uh, for the GRS, Government Record Service. These facilities are basically independent to each other. However, there are similarity of this facility in terms of the site selection criteria. For example, they have to be strategically located in central part of the Hong Kong. Also, this facility requires stable environment due to their operation need. After the feasibility study or engineering feasibility study, we found out that the co-location scheme of these two facilities is a viable option. Moreover, Bundling these two facilities into a single John Kevin's development could create synergy, which would get, give better results than implementing them individually. GEO will act as a word agent for this John Kevin's development project. We will oversee the whole process from design to the completion of construction. Also, despite the detailed arrangement is yet to be confirmed, I believe that we will somehow contribute to the future maintenance of the facility. Let's talk about the PWCL first. The existing PWCL is located in Kowloon Bay area near the Rock Pathan. From the photo, you could see that a very beautiful sea view. Just imagine how beautiful it could be to work within an office with a sea view seeing the Victoria Harbor. Although I don't have the exact figures, the PWCL worked there for almost 30 years. 30 years ago, is what is location in the middle of nowhere, and probably this is the reason why we can move there. Time flies and many things change. It is now a prime location with high land values nowadays. In case if you don't know what exactly does the PWCL2, I will give you some idea here. First of all, the PWCL carry out compliance tests for public works project to ensure the construction material meet the highest standard. It is an important step to ensure the quality of public works as a whole. We have many types of tests covering the concrete, steel, chemical, soil and rock tests and etc. Other than material tests, the PWCL also play an important role in research and development and setting standard. I'm sure that all of you heard about the uh, GeoSpec3 or some guideline which is published by the PWCL. Also, the PWCL would be involved in some forensic investigation as well. We are never satisfied with the current situation and we keep on striking for the excellency in order to provide the highest standards testing service to Hong Kong. Here are some photos showing the common laboratory testing in the PWCL. You will probably recognize the concrete pipe test, uh, the triaso test for the geotechnical engineer, direct tensile test for the rebar, concrete creep test, and etc. Besides these tests, you are aware of PWCL actually provide about 30, uh, 350 types of testing nowadays in order to cover all the needs in the industry. The types of testing is increasing because more and more new construction material are developed. The PWCL is working at its maximum capacity nowadays. It's carried out more than uh, 400,000 tests per year on average, which is equivalent to more than 8,000 tests a day, in a single day. Now you have some idea about the current situation of the PWCL. You can easily understand why we have to relocate it. First of all, given the occupied land is so valuable nowadays, it makes more sense for us to relocate it to something else to release the surface land for other beneficial use. For example, residential development. The nearby region will be developed into uh, East Kowloon Central Business District 2, and it is so obvious that a material testing laboratory will no longer be welcome in such a district. Second, the existing PWCL was built 30 years ago. 
it is inevitable that the facility has some aging problem. Although the building is still within its design lines, I suppose the old design constrained the operation. For example, extensive amount of manual transportation of material and result in low operation and energy efficiency. Therefore, enhancement to the operation efficiency is desired and is essential to cope with the increasing workload, as mentioned before. Moreover, as the demand of both testing number and types of testing has been increased continuously, the insufficient space limited the development of the laboratory. It all adds up that we need to relocate the existing PWCL. The other facility in this project is the GRS Government Red Cross Service Archive Center. As an engineer, I think most of us may not be familiar with the GRS. The GRS is one of the organizations under the umbrella of the Chief Secretary for Administration Office. Its vision is to be the most insightful and resourceful public archive in Hong Kong. The GRS spent tremendous effort in preserving the documentary heritage of our city. They have a building, the Hong Kong Public Records Building in Kun Tong. The records keep inside the building and really interest me a lot. For example, you can see the poster in the right hand side. It is an old poster advertising the opening of the MTR Chun Wan Nai in the 80s. The Hong Kong Public Records Building commissioned in 1997, which has been built for 24 years, is provides storage area for various types of government records, including paper records, microfilm records, electronic records. Amongst this type of records, the archive record is the more valuable record, which has high historical value. Therefore, the archive repository has been specially designed in order to maintain a stable environment for long-term storage. Other than the record st storage, the buildings also offers other types of service, such as the exhibition room, seminar room, workshop for conservation, appreciation, appraisal, and description. This area are open to public for searching and inspection of records. Similar to most of the office, amount of archives record continues to increase. Nowadays, the capacity of the existing archive in Kun Tom already been fully utilized. In order to cope with the increasing amount of records, the GRS urgently need a new archive center, which is large enough to accommodate the storage demand in the future 20 to 30 years. You may question that why the GRS could not rent some office building or industrial building to keep this record. As I mentioned before, the archive repository requires special design so that the temperature, humidity, lighting, dust level, and etc. are controlled at a very stringent standard. Conventional building structure could not offer such environment normally or unless a large amount of modification work has, been carried, has to be carried out in order to satisfy the requirements. Moreover, the energy consumption are very high so as to keep the constant temperature and humidity in a normal surface building. As such, keeping this record is an, in an ordinary building is not suitable for long-term uh, situation. In the following session, I will talk about the main reason for us to choose rock caverns. There are three main reasons to support us to take forward the caverns option. First of all, we wish to reserve the surface land for other beneficial use, say for the construction of residential building to alleviate the huge living demand. Second, the rock caverns can provide a stable environment which are uh, in particular important to these two facility. Also, the rock mass surrounded the facility will act as a natural barrier, which can effectively isolate the potential nuisance, such as noise, dust generated by the operation of this facility. The relocation of the PWCL is an excellent example of reserving the surface land for other, better, uh, other beneficial use. As the facility no longer fit in with the regional planning, moving the facility to somewhere else is a sensible option. At the beginning of the project, we did a site search for 
other potential surface sites with adequate areas in the central part of Hong Kong. We were unable to find a suitable surface site as the problem of the shortage of surface land is so obvious in Hong Kong. However, even there was a surface land, I think the rock cavern will still be a preferable option for relocating the PWCL, taking account the fact that the values of the surface land is so high nowadays in terms of the large land price and development potential, rather than occupying another piece of valuable land in central part of Hong Kong, the caverns option will still be financially and logically viable. As mentioned before, the rock caverns can provide a stable and unique environment which is in particular suitable for the PWCL and archive center. For example, we need a constant temperature at 27 degrees for the curing tank of the concrete crib. In the existing PWCL, a 24-7 air conditioning is required to achieve this requirement under different weather conditions. Just imagine this is so difficult during the sunny day in Hong Kong. It would be much better and much more easy to keep this temperature within the caverns. The side benefits of the stable environment are the reduction in energy consumption and increase of the lifespan of the equipment. These side benefits would enhance the overall energy and operation efficiency of the facility. In a material testing laboratory, Destructive testing is part of the daily routine. When these tests were carried out, it is inevitable that noise and dust will be generated. Let me show you how much noise could be generated by paying this radio crypt. This is the concrete pipe test. And this is the steel rebar test. As the rock caverns around the facility will act as a natural barrier, the noise and dust will be effectively isolated from the area outside the caverns. Therefore, the nuisance can be reduced to a minimal level. There are some successful cases of housing similar facility in caverns in foreign country, like various small scale material testing lab in Switzerland and the National Archive in Norway. Therefore, we are confident that we are ready to build the first full-scale material lab in caverns in the world and the first archive centers in caverns in Asia. The feasibility study state of the project is substantially completed. In the FS, some key design concept and parameter has been established, and I will tell you a thing or two about that. First of all, the location of the joint uh, cavern development has been decided and it will be in the Taishan Toss Strategic Caverns area, the SCVA number 28. This is a large uh, SCVA and its area has been highlighted in green in the figures. You may not familiar with the name of Taishan Top, but actually it is the Anderson Road Quarry site. The footprint highlighted in pink is the tentative layout of the caverns, while the area highlighted in orange will be the portal areas. Currently, the site is still undergoing the site formation works for the subsequent residential development. The future residential area is highlighted in blue. And the phase relocation uh, will be start from 2023 until the full intake in uh, 2026. Significant site constraint will be envisaged after the population intake. This slide shows a site photo of the existing uh, quarry slope. The tentative location are uh, overlap to the photo to give you the ideas how are the layout. Under the feasibility study, four caverns will be provided, of which two will be for the PWCL and the other two will be for the archive centers. We will adopt a hybrid uh, structural form, which consists of the portal structure and the cavern structure. These two parts of structure will be fully integrated. The portal structure will house the facilities such as the general office, exhibition room, conference room, which are similar to normal building structure. At this stage, we locate the ENM plant room outside the caverns, taking account the factor of fire safety. It may be revisited in the later stage of the project. 
Inside the caverns, it will be the main operation area and storage area. I will not repeat the advantage of putting this uh, area inside the caverns here. I would like to stress that the dimension so in this figure is just preliminary only. The size of the facility will be subject to optimization to enhance the cost effectiveness of the project. In the FS stage, four caverns, about 25 to 30 meter span, 30 meter tall, and 100 meter long, will be constructed in order to provide NOFA, the net operation floor area of about uh, 10,000. 10,000 for each uh, facility. Other than the four main caverns, construction of a network of tunnels and eddies in between these caverns are also anticipated. As I mentioned before, there will be a expanded building outside the uh, caverns, while the functional area will be high inside the caverns. Let me share with you a short video clip uh, illustrating the design concept of the portal buildings and how it's matched with the adjacent environment. Hope the video runs smooth in your computer. As shown in the video clips, uh, we aim to make the facility fully tie in with the adjacent environment. Firstly, the height of the portal buildings will not be too tall, as such the natural core resort will not be blocked by the buildings. Adequate greening measures like vertical greening, vegetation on the roof will be provided in order to make the buildings naturally blend into the surrounding environment. In addition to the architectural design and the greening proposal, we wish the facility could bring some extra benefits to the local community. For instance, we will provide some free area for organizing some public event or exhibition. One of the ideas is to display the Hong Kong geology in the free area as it is closely related to the Korean activity in the Anderson Road in the past. Life is never too easy or otherwise it will be boring. Okay, let's take a look. What are the major challenges we faced in this project? First of all, we have a very tight program to deliver the project, in particular for the PWCL part. The consultancy agreement will commence in quarter three this year, while the construction contract will commence in quarter one or quarter two, two oh, two three tentatively. It will take about five and a half years to complete all of the construction works under the John Kevin's development. Phased commissioning of the two facilities is anticipated. The new PWCL will be commissioned by early 2026, while the uh, GRS archive will be commissioned in end 2028. The first key constraint will come in the middle of the 2023 due to the initial population intake on the Anderson Road Quarry site. It is expected that the construction method and progress will be affected in order to minimize the disturbance to the public. For the PWCL part, we aim to complete the construction work within 30 months in order to release the existing land for land sale in late 2026. Basically, it is a mission impossible in the past, and I believe that only uh, Tom Cruise can uh, deliver the project in this time frame. However, if we could take full advantage of adopting the latest construction uh, technique, such as the BIM, MIC, DFMA, we may be able to do so nowadays. I will talk more about it in a later section. As an engineer, we will always face challenge when we design something new. As mentioned by Leslie, uh, one of the challenge is the design guideline. In this project, I would like to highlight two points about the design challenge. First of all, uh, the design guidelines specifically for the designing of this facility in Hong Kong, we do not have many guidelines 
for the in this aspect. In particular, the fire safety design guideline, although there is a design guideline on fire safety design for caverns, which was published in 1994 by BD and FSD. This guide only provide guideline to design facility with no population such as sewage treatment works. Due to the lack of design guideline, we have no other ways but to make reference with the building fire code. However, as the characteristic of caverns is completely different to the surface building, not all the requirements could be fully compiled. So we need to adopt fire engineering approach to justify everything. The second point I would like to cover is about the cause of caverns construction. As I mentioned in the beginning, we had quite a long history of using rock caverns in public works. We even use more rock caverns for MTR development. Yet, Kevin's construction is already well known for its high construction cost. Further to the technology uh, improvement nowadays, we believe that, that by using some new construction material, we could build the caverns in a better way and at a cheaper cost. So, one of the key objectives in this project is to adopt low-level design approach to strive for the highest cost effectiveness. As an engineer, we need to plan for the future. This is also essential for Kevin's development. According to the Development Bureau Telecom Circular number 8 stroke 2017, all government projects should provide suitable provision to safeguard the development potential of the SCVA. The SCVA number 28 is a very large piece of land. And even after the completion of our project together with the other po Kevin's project in the vicinity, say the EPD uh, project, there is still lots of area to be developed. However, the potential portal location indicated in the Kevin's master plan will be fully occupied by the existing project. So we have to find a uh, way to uh, enable the future development potential. Moreover, after the commissioning of this facility, it will be extremely difficult if not impossible to do Kevin's construction in the vicinity due to the disturbance to the operation of the uh, PWCL and archive. To make the situation even more complicated, please note that we have a large amount of population intake in front of the SCVA number 28. So the further development potential has to be fake, uh, safeguard and we have to do something now. I think identifying the problem is one of the main tasks of the engineer and providing the solution to those problems will be the second part of our, of our expertise. In order to overcome the challenge, we have explored several initiatives during the feasibility study stage. Several weeks ago, I attended a seminar and have learned that HSD has successfully constructed a hospital within several months. The key of the success is the adoption of the MIC, the Modular Integrated Construction. In order to meet the type program, adoption of MIC could be a possible life hack. The beauty of using MIC is that we will be able to do parallel construction. That is, when we are doing the caverns formation, the structural element could be fabricated in the factory off-site. Upon the completion of the caverns, we could deliver the modules to site for assembly. Um, this, could, a, this could be a perfect solution to expedite our construction progress for um, almost one year. And as such, our project milestone can be met ideally. One of the key concerns of using MIC is whether we could assemble the MIC element in an effective way inside a confined cavern bay. I think we have quite a bit of experience in using MIC for surface building construction. Usually, lift, lifting cran would be essential plans for assembly the model. Yet, it is so obvious that we do not have the luxury to have a lifting, lifting cran inside the caverns. However, we have consulted some MIC experts and we are convinced that, that there are still several viable alternatives for assembling the module inside the caverns. 
There are several options to be further explored in the later stage of the project. For instance, we may have a gantry crane inside the caverns to transport the elements in both vertical and horizontal direction. Moving the modules by fault lifting may be also possible. Uh, the most innovative idea is to assemble one layer of the structure outside the caverns by lifting can, and then we somehow transfer the parcel complete structure by push and pull mechanism in a horizontal manner towards the end of the caverns. Of course, this is just preliminary idea, and its application is subject to confirm in later stage of the project. However, we are confident that MIC should be adopted and this is a doable option. When we're using MIC, we need, to, uh, we need the expertise from the contractor and the module supplier. The earlier, the better. One of the possible measures to capture the expertise from the contractor is the adoption of early contractor involvement procure method under the NEC4 documents. There is a new course X22 in the NEC4 document. However, it is not easy to directly apply this course in our project as we may have some issue on the complying the prevailing requirement for procuring construction contract in Hong Kong. Instead, we will take the spirit of the ECI and formulate an adequate procurement strategy to achieve the same goal. The details of the implementation plan is being devised at the moment. This webinar is organized by the IOM3. Let's talk about something about mining and material. Uh, we expected that the formation of the caverns will be carried out by drill and blast. In order to maximize the excavation progress, we wish to revisit the constraint in, of induced vibration, which in turn limited the amount of explosive we could use. We are lucky that we do not have much sensitive receiver overlaying the caverns. One of the closest sensitive receivers are the rock slope, which were formed and stabilized under the ARQ development. So the allowable vibration limit of this slope will be critical to determine how much explosive we could use. While in the GEO report number 15 provide guidelines to determine the allowable vibration limit for rock slope without stabilization measures and soil slope and other document, the GEO TGN number 28 gives the control framework for soil slope that meet our current standard. However, there is no well-established method for the stabilized rock slope. As such, we wish to develop a rational design method under this project that we can not only beneficial to this uh, project, but also other Kevin's project involve jewel and brass works in the future. We think that the use of spray concrete lighting will be dramatically increase the construction efficiency. There are many good examples of excellent application of spray concrete lighting worldwide over the past two decades. The photo on the left hand side saw a caverns in soft ground supported by the spray concrete lining in UK in the U Coswell project. Due to the improvement of spray machine and the mixed formula, we are now able to construct excellent quality spray concrete nowadays. Several years ago, when I attend an overseas tunneling course, one of the speaker claims that actually the use of spray concrete is a more sophisticated better controlled way of construction when compared to the conventional concreting technology. The concrete technology has been significantly improved over the past decade. Now we have extremely wide spectrum of concrete ported for different applications. One of the example is the engineering cementaceous composite developed by the Professor Wickerley of the University of Michigan. This produce a well-known uh, this product is well known for its high string performance, and so it has it's had an other name called the bendable concrete. Also, the self-healing property of the ECC could help to reduce the long-term maintenance requirement of the caverns. Eventually, we would like to achieve a more cost-effective form of lining design, which is uh, the composite lining. The primary lining and the secondary lining will be both considered in the permanent design, unlike the conventional assumption that the contribution of the temporary lining is being ignored. 
In fact, the assumption of uh, composite lining had already been adopted in UK since the Coswell project. Although the price of the advanced concrete pour that uh, may be higher than the normal concrete, the major saving will come from the reduction of construction time due to simplification and streamlining of the construction cycle. BIM is another key technology we, to ensure the effectiveness of the design and construction. We would like to move a step forward such that BIM will be used for future access management. The BIM model will be used throughout the process from design to long-term main, uh, maintenance. Such continuity could enable smooth transition between different phases of work and would reduce handover issues between different parties. Finally, we want modern facility with high degree of automation. By adoption of automation, we could increase the operation efficiency within the facility. Also, we could improve the testing quality by eliminating human error at large. But I would like to draw your attention that if automation system is used, we will need a suitable layout to accommodate the machinery. Depending on the size of machines, Respective requirement will be imposed on the rooms, room size and the compartmentalization of the caverns in order to make a system work in a effective way. By designing the uh, compartmentalization size, we should then be aware of the relevant fire safety requirement. Here comes to the last part of my presentation. New ideas always come with new challenge. I think. Uh, our engineers are well trained to be a problem solver and we are competent to tackle all these challenge. In particular, some problems which are impossible to solve in the past does not mean that we cannot solve it today or in the future. Innovation is the tools to help us to solve the problem in a new way and in a better way. As the project proponent, we are not able to solve all the problem by ourselves. That's why we need your support, your professional knowledge, and your new ideas to deliver the project. It would be great if you could join me to think out of the box and be creative. At last, I hope with your unfailing support, we could achieve more together in the Rock Caverns development for the benefit of Hong Kong society. I wish in the soon future, we will make the rock caverns, uh, we will have more rock caverns with a wider application and the caverns will be better connected to the community. Thank you. This is the end of my presentation. Well, thank you all. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, to the to our two speakers, uh, Mr. Ivan Chen and uh, Mr. Leslie Chen. They both give a very um, informative and inspiring presentation. And uh, after all, I think uh, the two speakers has presented to all of you that um, there are upcoming Kevin projects. And I believe all these projects will um, present opportunity to practitioner or professional in our community uh, in terms of well, business opportunities and also opportunity for research and development and advancement in our technology. So now, uh, thanks to the two speakers for their presentation. And here now we come to the uh, question and answer sections. For those who would like to ask, uh, feel free to drop your uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, perhaps I think uh, I'll leave Start, I'll leave all of you some time to think about uh, is there anything you would like to ask. You may type your questions, uh, that's it by all means in the chat box. Um, I, I, I read a question about guide for cavern engineering and mm. uh, guide to fire safety design. Um, uh, uh, the question says uh, the, the current guide is um, incompatible with gasoline storage in cavern and um, uh, will there be any plans from GEO at these issues? Um, I think currently 
our target and our prime objective of updating the guide is on the um, upcoming projects like um, like I have present. Um, there are several different types of uh, uh, facilities that are already uh, super challenging, like um, like the water treatment works and uh, and also um, all kinds of um, uh, 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 different uses uh, like uh, public work central laboratory and the archive center. Um, uh, I think we have to do do it uh, step by step. Um, uh, absolutely, storing um, gasoline uh, is a doable idea. Like um, like in Singapore, uh, they have been uh, uh, storing uh, oil for uh, tons of oils underground, and and this is this are successful application. But um, I think we are we are now focusing on our uh, facilities in, uh, in Hong Kong uh, to solve the upcoming project at hand. Actually, um, but there is no stopping us from um, um, from from going further. Like after we we have a first step of um, uh, of a first round of upgrading works of uh, and relocation projects, then we will further explore other types of facilities. And as we go on, we can we can further uh, tackle all the technical challenge relating to storing different types of facilities in caverns. But um, it is absolutely a doable idea, and but um, we are doing it. Uh, uh, on a step-by-step -step manner. Yes, uh, I see one question is about the uh, uh, seepage and what uh, control of the water leakage. Uh, at this moment, uh, for my project, I think we will design for drain caverns and we will allow seepage of water inside the caverns, but uh, we have to provide some uh, provisions such as the drainage pipe to collect all the uh, water seep into the uh, um, caverns. So uh, probably we won't adopt uh, the old days design to design for anything and drain and uh, to resist a high water pressure, but we will just simply allow the water to seep in Yes, for example, in the uh, Shatin Civil Treatment Works, uh, there are some uh, drainage network behind the um, spray concrete lining. So to collect all the drainage water to relieve the water pressure. And this is the way uh, we would like to go, I guess. Anything to supplement? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean um, to control groundwater leakage, there is no magic about it. Um, Typically, pre-excavation grouting, and then uh, all kinds of um, waterproofing membranes, and if and if the inner structures demands a very tight uh, water tightness, uh, then 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 all kinds of internal umbrellas, uh, 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 membranes would help. And I think, and then also based on all other experience from overseas. Um, these are all can, can be tackled and it just depends how we are going to do our detailed design. I think the solutions are there and we are just have to be open mind to adopt all the all the all kinds of solutions to to achieve our our construction standard. Yes, another question from Kelvin, so one of my old fans. Uh, yes, we will plan some uh, provision to reserve the development potential in the Anderson Road Quarry site, uh, but the details uh, provision has not yet to be confirmed. Uh, one of the ideas is maybe we can uh, provide some construction tunnels uh, connecting to the back of our project to some a uh, viable portal area to allow future excavation at the back of our cavern. This is the preliminary ideas. Anyway, uh, although the scheme has not been uh, confirmed, but I think something has to be done to enable the uh, future development potentials. Uh, a follow-up follow -up question is asked uh, about the 10 meter water head. I think for drain tunnels, we will see uh, theoretically, uh, if it is designed as drain tunnel, uh, the 10 meter water head will not be adopted, I guess. Okay, so uh, and the next question is about the um, 
time frame for the proposed Anderson Road Cavern uh, and the quarry cavern at Lante uh, underground quarrying. Um, I, I, I think for, for the, I think these, these are two very different types of projects. One types is uh, the Anderson Road Crack Caverns, they are purposely built. The construction time frame would be uh, particularly suitable for the, um, would have to be uh, articulated, uh, uh, would have to be uh, designed to, to match the, the, the need. But for the quarry types of caverns, they are like um, a more uh, a, a, a long, longer duration, like 10, 20 years, because for, for a cavern, uh, for underground quarrying, it serves the purpose of uh, uh, producing rock products and also the concrete products, asphalt production. And this needs time to slowly excavate the rock material and takes time for the market to digest the rock. And so uh, it is not, uh, there is no, not um, uh, um, uh, a confined period, a short confined period for underground a quarrying type contract normally it requires uh, like decades to to complete um yeah that is that is the time frame for the for the lamte underground uh, quarry and all kinds of quarry they, they need a long time span and for the anderson road caverns i believe ivan maybe you maybe. can have some ideas on uh, that uh the john cavern development uh as i mentioned before uh we target to commence the construction of caverns by 2022 2023 and uh if probably it will be phased complete uh for the pwcl it will be completed by 2026 and then the, for the archive center we target to uh make the facility commission by the end of 2028. Uh, I would like to give a little bit of supplementary about the 10 meter water head. I think before uh, we can adopt a zero water head design, we have to do more research at this stage. For example, we may uh, do more uh, ground investigation and monitoring of the existing Kevin's facility and see what is the uh, groundwater profile and pressure profile uh, in the existing facility to justify zero groundwater pressure. Um, I read a question about um, the rock reinforcement approach. Uh, the question is that um, uh, Kevin Support is adopting the rock reinforcement approach by rock boating. As such, could you share your opinion for the rationale behind using a thin layer of short crate. I think um, uh, for rock reinforcement approach, uh, rock bolting and short crate, or, or we say uh, spray concrete, they are serving different purpose. Um, bolting, I, I think there is a lot of expert here. Um, uh, rock bolting is like uh, creating a, a rock arch uh, to tie up all the, uh, 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 to, uh, to tie up all the rock mass uh, about the, the, the crown and um, and uh, is also providing a confinement to those rock mass and and of course the thin uh, layers of um, of short crate is to supplement to those uh, areas where the rock bolting could not handle like the space between rock bolting and therefore uh, in, in my understanding for the kinds of um, uh, rock reinforcement approach design uh, the short crate is not is not uh, 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 using it as a, as an axial bending uh, member. It is simply using it as um, uh, to 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 provide uh, confinement to the to the um, uh, smaller piece of uh, rock fa fragments. And I think the um, design methodology uh, for rock reinforcement approach is is um, is not. Is not uh, taking the, the the short crate as uh, axial bending members. I, I think this is um, 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 the reason for that. Yeah. Uh, one question is about the MIC. Um, yeah. Uh, we could consider to provide a gantry crane uh, mounted in the crown or somewhere else. 
to uh, yes, it can be used for future maintenance, but it all depends on the how how the final design is. For example, if it's crash with the overhead uh, ventilation duct, uh, we may have to do it in another way. But I, I think this is a good idea to mount it on the crown. So um, there is a question about the shortage of concrete bashing plants and also um, is Kevin uh, a potential solution to this land use and is there any plan for more rice widespread use in this area? Um, this is a good question. Concrete bashing plant is absolutely suitable to be placed um, um, inside a cavern and as shown in other uh, places of the world, uh, it is, uh, it is the, the feasibility is ab absolutely here. So um, it, is, it is more about a, pl a planning how to, uh, um, uh, uh, of, 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 and also the time, how to match the time of creating a cavern and then placing a concrete bashing plant. But actually this idea can be more uh, uh, can be implemented in a more efficient manner to be integrated with a uh, with a quarry. Say like if we have a quarry initially um, uh, underground quarry and then uh, uh, after certain uh, of, of the uh, cabin space is uh, completed and then an additional concrete pressure plant can be placed in the created cabin space and that is a, a very efficient use of of land. So uh, uh, definitely this is a, a doable idea and, and uh, uh, it, it can be uh, a very efficient way to operate a, a cavern, I believe. Right. Uh, before Roy uh, give us a closing, uh, and since uh, Leslie has mentioned about underground quarrying, uh, probably I would like to share with everyone and uh, tonight we may have some member of uh, Hong Kong CAA here. Uh, GEO is uh, preparing to uh, uh, start a underground quarrying at Silho One, right? Should I say that, Leslie? Uh, well, we are um, <laughs> considering all kinds of locations. Huh? Yeah. Yes. So we, I, I, I would like to. Uh, uh, share with uh, the industry that we are really looking forward to more underground uh, construction, underground quarrying, etc. Uh, in in the coming years. So uh, tonight, uh, I think we we uh, really uh, understand uh, the future development uh, of uh, uh, Hong Kong underground construction. So. Roy, uh, I'll leave it to you. There's not much I have to add. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank the two speakers from the GEO again. Both are my colleagues, Ivan and Leslie. Um, I think to me, uh, this the talk tonight uh, is something new because uh, it's not only about the content that uh, may inspire the, particip the participants, uh, to me, as our chairman, uh, Mr. Timlin said, I think tonight we are happy to have uh, those practitioner or professional of uh, different kind of discipline from the uh, Con Hong Kong Construction Association. Because um, as far as I um, as far as I, I am aware of, the topic of cabin developments has uh, gaining momentum among uh, professionals uh, across different disciplines. But this is the very first time that we. I'm very happy to introduce this topic <clears throat> to our friends in the construction sector. I mean, this is all very important. Engineers know what they are going to do in the design contract management, but equally important is we know or we need the support from the construction sectors. We, need, we know how to design something, but we also need someone to help us to build it in a cost-effective and safe manner. So I am looking forward to this to have more opportunity to exchange with our peers <coughs> and our friends in the construction or uh, the contractor sector further on this topic. So uh, anything, uh, Leslie and Ivan, you would like to add? 
Yeah. I'm very happy to, uh, to end this uh, webinar to, uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.